One of the first things any traveler should know is when they are in travel status. A traveler is in travel status when they are 35 miles or more from both their home and their official station. The official station is the employee's usual work location. It is de designated by the head of the agency and must be in the best interest of the state. The purpose of having a correct official station is to help establish when the employee not only is in travel status, but when they are eligible for travel expenses. There are potential tax consequences when an official station is assigned incorrectly. So it's critical that the head of the agency and the designated employee data administrator or EDA have the official station of any employee be the primary place of work. Lastly, any travel between an employee's home and the official station or commuting is not reimbursable. When a traveler is working at an alternate work location that is not 35 miles or more away from their home or official station, then they are not in travel status and are considered to be traveling within proximity. When traveling within proximity, the traveler may be reimbursed for transportation expenses from the home to an alternate work location, the official station to an alternate work location, or between two or more alternate work locations. As a reminder, commuting reimbursement or travel between the employee's home and official station is not reimbursable. When traveling within proximity, especially for situations that may appear to be part of commuting travel, a traveler may have to follow the lesser of mileage rule. The lesser of mileage rule comes into effect when there is any travel between an employee's home and an, and an alternate work location. Anytime this particular travel occurs, reimbursement for this mileage should be the lesser of the mileage between the employee's home and the alternate work location or the mileage between the official station and the alternate work location. The lesser of mileage rule does not affect travel between two alternate work locations and the traveler should be reimbursed for the actual miles traveled. To help show the different ways of traveling within proximity and the application of the lesser of mileage rule, we have examples in the next few slides. For this example, we have an employee traveling from their home to their official station. Then from their official station, they travel 10 miles to their first alternate work location or Alt-1. Then they travel 15 miles to Alt-2 before traveling 13 miles back to their official station. At their official station, they then return home for the day. Throughout this scenario, the employee is traveling within the 35 mile radius circles of their home and their official station. So the two questions to think about are, does the lesser of mileage rule apply? And how much mileage is this employee allowed to claim? For this example, the lesser of mileage rule does not apply since there is no travel between the home and an alternate work location. The employee is not allowed to claim commuting mileage, which is why the travel between home and official station is in red. Therefore, the traveler is allowed to claim all other points of travel at the actual mile shown. To determine the total miles the traveler can claim, add the 10 miles plus the 15 miles plus the 13 miles to get a total of 38 miles. To determine the amount reimbursed to the traveler, multiply the 38 miles by the mileage reimbursement rate. The traveler receives the reimbursement for all 38 miles because transportation expenses are reimbursable when traveling within proximity and the lesser of mileage rule did not apply in this scenario. For this example, we have an employee traveling from their home 25 miles to Alt-1. Then they travel 15 miles to their official station before traveling back home. This travel again is all done within 35 miles of the employee's home and their official station. In this case, the lesser of mileage rule applies because, per the criteria, travel between home and an alternate work location has occurred. Next, we have to determine the amount of miles the traveler can claim when traveling from their home to Alt-1. The rule states that we take the lesser of the miles between the home and the alternate work location, which is 25 miles for this example, or the miles between the alternate work location and the official station, which is 15 miles. Since 15 miles is less than 25 miles, the employee must claim 15 miles instead of the actual 25 miles 
when traveling home to Alt-1. Adjustments will need to be made when claiming miles with either the SFS mileage details or the AC-160. For this, the traveler would enter the date of which they traveled, the start of their home, start location is their home address, destination location is their alternate work location one address, actual miles are 25, and claimed miles are 15. When all the proper miles are filled out completely and accurately, the total mileage the traveler is allowed to claim is 15 miles for the first leg, the actual 15 miles for the second leg, which equals a total 30 miles times the mileage reimbursement rate. The next example is a little tougher. The traveler drives five miles from their home to Alt-1, then 20 miles to Alt-2, followed by 15 miles to Alt-3, before traveling 30 miles to their home. They do not stop at their official station. Here, the lesser of mileage rule does apply and it applies twice. This is because there are two legs of the trip that involve the traveler going between their home and an alternate work location. For the first leg of the trip, the mileage comparison for this would be the five miles between home and Alt-1 and the miles between the official station and Alt-1. For this example, the miles between official station and Alt-1 is 30 miles, which is greater than the five miles between home and Alt-1. Therefore, for the first leg, they can claim the actual five miles. The second instance where the lesser of mileage rule occurs is the last leg of the trip, which is from Alt-3 to home. The miles between Alt-3 and home is 30 miles. The employee would have to find what the miles are from Alt-3 to the official station, which in this case is 10 miles. Therefore, the traveler can only claim 10 miles, not the actual 30 miles, since the miles from Alt-3 to the official station are less than the miles from Alt-3 to home. So the total miles the traveler can claim is the five miles from the first leg, the 20 miles from the second leg, 15 miles from the third leg, and 10 miles from the last leg of the trip, totaling 50 miles times the, the mileage reimbursement rate. As a reminder, the most cost-effective method must be used. For this example, due to the number of trips the traveler has to take, the number of miles and other travel considerations, a personal vehicle might not be the most cost-effective and a rental vehicle or common carrier might be the more, the more cost-effective options. One can determine if the most cost-effective method is being used by completing a cost analysis, such as, but not limited to, the OGS trip calculator. The last scenario we have is the employee traveling 10 miles from their home to Alt-1, 30 miles to Alt-2, 20 miles to Alt-3, and another 20 miles to their official station before then returning back home. For this scenario, when they travel to their second work location, they are in travel status due to them being outside the 35 mile radius of both the home and the official station. Here, the lesser of mileage rule does not apply. If any destination puts the traveler into travel status, such as the second alternate work location in this example, then the lesser of mileage rule does not apply and the employee can claim actual miles. The employee can claim the 10 miles from the first leg, 30 from the second, 20 from the third, 20 from the fourth, giving a total of 80 miles times the mileage reimbursement rate. As a reminder, the travel from the official station to home is commuting and is not reimbursable. This is another example where the mode of transportation should be the most cost-effective method and evaluated through a cost analysis, especially due to the traveler and entering into travel status. Completing the cost analysis will provide justification to reviewers that the most cost-effective method was used.